comparison, but we got out of the air on the trap line. Got a little bit of oil. So the rabbit's really lean. So I'm going to let my oil heat up. And then after we get done with this soup, we're going to take and can it. And from there you can make stew, anything like that. Um, basically all I'm going to do is add my basic mirepoix, two parts onions, one part celery, one part carrots. We're going to sweat down our stew meat first, or our hair stew meat, if you want to call it that. Or sear it, cook, take it back out, and then we're going to sweat down our mirepoix, add everything back in. I'm going to add a mixture of um, chicken and beef broth to it, just because it's a little bit more to me, gamey, or game flavored, not gamey, but I just like it a little bit better. Now I've got all the bones in here. I'm not going to throw them away because I took off the meat off the main parts of the bones. I've still got the front legs and the rib cage and everything and a little bit of meat that's on it. What we're going to do is once we add the stock to the pot, then we're going to add the bones on top and we're just going to let it simmer for probably four or five hours and let all of that meat take and render off the bone and then we'll pull the bones out and then every any meat that's left on here or that's left on here now is going to be in the soup so that way we're using everything off the animal all the hair and the entrails I use on my trap line. I use it for trapping whether it be fox or any other um, predator. I use that. Whether you say it's right or wrong, I don't know if you're into trapping, but that's what I use. I like to use everything off of it. So check our... We're going to add our rabbit. So you're going to have to use a little bit more fat than you normally would because the rabbit is very lean. So what I'm doing is just making sure that this doesn't stick down. I'm going to let it sit. If you've never had hair, to me it kind of tastes like a cross between venison and like a chicken, it's a very neutral flavor. Alright, so we got our uh, stew meat, if you want to call it that, pretty well cooked up. But now what I'm going to do, is I'm actually going to put this in the refrigerator. Because I'm not going to add this to my stock as I'm going along. But as I'm here, I'm going to add my onions. And usually it's about a pound of mirepoix for a gallon of soup. I got a little bit more here, but I wanted to have a real hearty stew. And I'm actually going to reuse these jars when we go to can it. Okay. I add just a little bit more oil. Yeah, I'll let these sweat down. I'm going to cover them, turn the heat down just a little bit, and I'll bring you back once we get those sweat All right, so our mirepoix is sweated down. The onions are getting to be translucent. It's got a really good flavor to it. So the other thing that we're going to add that I like to add to mine is just a little bit of um, tomato sauce that we made, or just basically tomatoes, but that we canned here. Add them. Just 
give it some nice flavor. Alright, so now I'm going to add my stock. Like I said, this is half beef, half chicken stock, or base, I should say. Adjust the flavor a little bit more. We get it down to it. Okay. So I'm going to take our rabbit bones. Throw our rabbit bones in there. So you're going to get good flavor off the rabbit bones. I like to make sure they're just submerged. And I think I'm, this is just the meat that came off the rib, but I think I'm going to leave that out. So, now we're going to let this sit. I'm going to cover it. We're going to let it simmer for about four hours. Then we'll come back and I'll show you what so it's been a couple of hours. I'm going to pull my bones out of it. My stock. So I've got my glass jars that were warmed up in the, oh, hang on, I'm going to pull everything off of this, then I'll get you right back, pull them off the bone. Okay, so I got all my meat off the bone here, got the bones clean, those in the sink. Alright, so here's what I do. I've got my jars that are warm, and I got potatoes here that are just warmed up with hot water. I didn't put them in here because I'm going to be canning this and I don't want to overcook the potatoes for so long. So I'm just going to start with a handful in each jar. So one thing that I do is divide it equally between the jars. I can get 10 cans in my canner. I'll do one of them without and I'll, when I take it out I can add noodles to the broth and cook the noodles right in the broth. And I'll do it that way. So we'll just leave one of them without any. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing with my meat. canning this is going to be called uh, so we're going to hot pack these I got hot liquid by hot packing I mean we're packing it with hot liquid going into a hot canner when we get doing like beef pork chicken that kind of stuff and it's a cold pack where you're just putting the meat in the jars cold you're not browning them off or anything You've got to put it in a cold canner. Same thing with the jars. If you're hot packing, the jars have got to be hot so you don't break the jars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rough scoop of my mirepoix. Same thing. I'm trying to get it so it's evenly divided between the jars. I don't want one jar to have all the meat and no mirepoix and I don't want another jar to have all mirror pond, all meat. And you can kind of see it over here. I've got steam coming out of here. And I did get it a little bit too hot, so I had to take that off there. I'll wait for the 
pressure release to drop. There it did. So we can take the lid off. All right. So now I've got all these basically filled up. I take my ladle. should have more than enough broth to go around, but once again, I'm just going to take and individually put it in. I wish you guys could smell what this smells like. It smells amazing. Now, the other thing that I really don't do much of is I don't add any salt or pepper to this. Um, I like to season it as I go, because one of the recipes I'm going to show you with this is going to be making like a of a stew with biscuits. I'm hoping right after I get done with this, I'm probably going to try doing it for supper. But that way I can adjust any of the seasoning that I want to later on when I finish it. Or if I just eat it as soup here, just basically warm it up and eat it, add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper if it needs it. Now the other thing that you gotta watch for is we gotta leave one inch of headroom. By headroom I mean from the, this is the head, we gotta have one inch down. I give it just a little bit extra when I do soup, because when it boils it's gonna wanna Oil up. There isn't a lot of fat in this, but there is some. And if any fat gets onto the rings, that's where you get where it's not going to seal. Looks like I'll have maybe just a little bit of broth left for me to try. Because I haven't even tried it yet. So, I'm going to get these going, that in there. Alright, so now I'm going to pull my lid off and as I prepare this. Now this is hot, boiling water in here. So I'm going to lift that off, you can see the steam coming up. I'm just going to crack it so that steam gets off. When I lift the lid off, it's not going to come in my face and burn me, because it will burn me quicker than you would imagine. Now I'm going to take, do this over. Take a washcloth and I'm going to wipe the lid, the lip of this. I'm actually going to do it twice. First time is just with a hot soapy water, or not soapy water, but a hot washcloth. Basically this is getting all the like big particulates off of it. And next I'm going to come and I grab another washcloth or a paper towel. And I'm going to use vinegar. Now vinegar is going to take all of the um, fat and grease off the lids, so that the, or off the lip, so that the lids will stay sealed. And no matter how much you try it, you're still going to get where they're not. 100% going to seal. Usually it does pretty well. But what I use is just the regular white vinegar. And I just take and go right around the lid. If a little bit, I got it pretty well saturated. If a little bit drips into the Soup, that's fine. Now the they say these last 
anywhere from three to five years, depending on your lids and what's in it and that. Uh, the kind of interesting thing that they have found is that, I don't remember where it is, but it was on the Mississippi, and they had a paddle boat go down in the river. Well, they just found it, They found it after about a hundred years. I don't remember what the date was that they found it. But the canned food that was in it was still good. Didn't have the vitamin uh, count that um, it did when it was fresh. But the food was still good to the point where you weren't going to get sick if you ate it. Don't have the uh, you want to call it an article or anything like that on hand, but just an interesting fact that I read one time. Now I don't know if I would advise eating it after a hundred years, but I just found this uh, article interesting. Now when I put the uh, lids on these, I just want them finger tight. You don't want to crank them down, otherwise the lids will bow and buckle. Now we're going to add them to our pot, and I think I'm going to move you over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Alright, so now we're going to add our soup jars to our pot. So this is a Presto, not affiliated or anything with Presto canning, but just to tell you what brand it is. And this can hold 10 pint jars, these are pints, of regular mouth lids. And this is a pressure canner. There's really no need to be afraid of it. The one thing that you got to make sure is you got to watch that this here is not plugged. And the easiest way to do that is when it's off, you just basically look through it, and if you can see light through it, it's not plugged. So the other thing that you got to watch is just make sure that your um, seal is good. I want to put it on. Turn it towards you guys just a little bit. So you got your weight that's going to go on here. Not yet though. You have your pressure gauge back here is a little stop and when this gets up to pressure it lifts up like that and it locks this lid so you can't take it off. So the canning procedure that we're going to do with this today is we're going to take and turn it on high heat. We're going to let it come up to a boil inside of here. This back button is going to pop up and there's going to become a stream of uh, steam that comes out of it. And it's got to be a solid steam. We're going to set the timer for 10 minutes. This lets everything inside of it come up to temperature. And then we're going to put our weight on it. Now at the elevation I'm at, I need just need to have it at 11 pounds of pressure, which is right up on top here. Once it comes to 11 pounds, we're going to take and turn the heat down and get it so that it holds at 11 pounds. And we got to do that for pints for with the soup that we're making. We got to do 75 minutes for pints or 90 minutes for quarts, but we only have to do 75 minutes, being that we're doing pints. So I'm going to shut it off once we get to the stage where I'm putting the weight on, and I'll show you how to bring it up to temperature. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm hoping that you can see it, but the back safety top is up. We got a steady steam of, stream of steam coming out of here. Um, I don't know. They are dangerous, but as you can see, I can put my hand in here. It's warm. It's not like it's burning me. If I got down right to it, it would. And if I put this on there and then pull it off, it would definitely burn me. But at this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes. And then after this gets done for 10 minutes, I'll put the weight on and I'll bring you back then. All right, so we got 38 seconds left on it. 
Um, I forgot to mention that there is two types of canners. There's a pressure canner and there's a water bath canner. Um, the water bath, the difference between them, of course, this one uses pressure to get it up to temp, used for meat, that kind of stuff, where you've got to get it over a certain temperature to kill the um, bacteria, botulism, that kind of stuff. So this one, the or pressure goes up, which causes the temperature to go up. And the other one, you basically put the jars in, cover them with water, you boil the water, and that's a water bath that's totally bathed in the bath. So I've done both of them, and I'll do a video on the water bath in the future. But our timer just went off, so I'm going to cover that up. As you can tell, the sound went right down. So now we're going to watch this temperature gauge as it comes up. And once it hits 11 pounds here, then we're going to put a timer on for 75 minutes. So you see just a little bit of steam coming off of here. Um, it does residual a little bit of uh, liquid comes through here because of the steam coming up. That's fine. You just kind of want to watch around the sides. I have had some times where it's leaking out of the side and just dripping water. Then you got to shut it down and redo it. Now, the one thing with pressure canning, if your temperature drops below, or your pressure drops below like 11 and it drops under, you should restart your timer as far as how long it's been canned. So that's the one thing that is different. Um, water bath, you don't have to worry about it too much as long as it's not boiling over. You know, you just have it submerged, you're good to go. But this one, you do have to watch the pressure, and if it goes under, you reset the timer once it gets back up to 11 pounds of pressure. So we're at about 10 and a half. It's gonna continue climbing. I'm gonna turn it down to about a four and a half. I'm gonna set my timer for 75 minutes, hour and 15 minutes. And I'll bring you back once this gets to um, the end of the timer, and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so our timer just got done. We're going to shut off the heat, and we're not going to touch this. We do not remove the weight. We do not try to move it, take off the lid or anything. So we're just going to leave it right here, and we're going to let the pressure come down to zero. This back latch has to drop down, and then we can open it up. I'll bring you back when that happens. I'm going to head actually out and check my traps right now, so we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, so I just got back from trapping the, or checking the trap line. We got this down to zero, the um, lock is off, and pull that, the weight off, and twist it, and lift it off, let some of the steam come out, there we go, you can see that some of them are already dropped down, and there is our rabbit stew, our rabbit soup, it can be made into stew, or like I said, I think I want to take and make one of them into rabbit stew with uh, biscuits on top of it. Sounds really good. Thicken it with a little bit of roux and make biscuits. Put top it with the biscuits. Pop it in the oven. So. If you guys want to see the recipe for what I did with soup, look in the description below. And until next time, for my family of years, God bless and have a good day.